Good morning, everyone. How are we? My name is Matthew. I'm about to take you through a yoga class. So I'm just going to wait a second to make sure we have a few people out there and that you can all hear me before I keep going. Hey, Mia, hello, how are you? Okay, can I just maybe get, hi Kathy, can everyone hear me okay? Hi Carl, good to have you. Please give me a yes or a thumbs up in the comments that you can hear me and then we'll be good to go. Give me a thumbs up or any sort of yes in the comments, please. Yes. All right, we're good to go. <laughs> nice. Okay, so today we're going to play a little bit with uh, working towards a half moon pose. But uh, don't stress. In the process, we're just going to really stretch out the hips and give our body a nice, good old stretch because we've been sitting down a lot all day I'm sure sorry a lot this week at home I'm sure so uh, without any delay let's get to it right so let's come to the mat come to all fours just ground your hands uh, underneath your shoulders hips above the knees we'll just work through a few cat cows to start the, bre uh, the practice as you take a breath in Elongate the spine, chin forward, belly towards the mat. As you breathe out, bring the chin back to the chest, pushing to the hands, bring the rib cage just closer together. Breathing. Feel the breath travel all the way to your belly. Breath out. Draw everything in, squeeze that air out. So you can start to close your eyes, sink the movement with the breath. As you're doing this, start to feel yourself centering within, not getting distracted by what's happening out there, just focusing on your breath. and that beautiful synchronicity with your movement. Okay. Now that you've done a few cat cows, you stay where you are. I'm just gonna turn around so you can see me a little better. I'm gonna stay on my hands, right? But this time I wanna draw half circles with my uh, hips. So it's almost like I'm moving in like a pendulum shape from side to side. As I do that, as I move to one side, you'll notice the elbow coming down on the opposite side of my hip. So let it, right? In fact, if you want a little deeper, you can ground that elbow down and then go to the other side. So let's just do a few little pendulum swings side to side. Just to open up the hip and the spine. Now, if you feel like you're a little bit more open, maybe take this movement into a full circle. So roll all the way to the front as well. And then when you had enough on one direction, take it to the other direction as well. Keep following your breath. Big breath in as the spine lengthens. And on the breath out, when the hip goes back.
So once you've done a few on both sides, we'll come back to our tabletop position. And from here, I'm going to maybe walk the hands a little bit forward. Okay, so now my hands are in front of my shoulders, yeah? I'm going to roll my chest and shoulders forward on the breath in, keeping the chin tucked in, and then I'm going to extend the hips. Pop the chest out, chin forward, and I'm going to breathe out, roll the hip back. Breath in, roll the chest forward. Extend the hip, and on the breath out, roll the hip back. Now just flow through this for a few more breaths. Really working that wave-like motion into the spine. I'm only rolling forward as fast as my breath wants me to, right? And one last one. Beautiful. All right. So, let's start with so come back to tabletop we're going to start by lifting the left leg off pressing the left foot towards the back as I do that the right hand reaches forward right so come to this asymmetrical tabletop balance now if you've done my class a couple of weeks ago you would have done this we're going to bring the knee to the elbow And I'm going to breathe out when the knee and the elbow touches, right? Breath in, reach back out. Breath out, draw the elbow to the knee. I'm going to do a few of these just to get comfortable. Now, if you like to have a little bit more fun, maybe challenge yourself a little, sit in and close your eyes. Find that balance first and then slowly bring the knee and elbow together. See if you can do this with a minimum of wobble. You really got to focus on the breath once you close your eyes. Now one more. Squeeze it together. And then reach back out. Now, this part is optional. If you like a little stretch, reach around, grab your back foot and kick into the hand. You can keep kicking into the hand and get as tall as you can, or you can relax for a breath out, and on the next breath in, kick back into the hand, come up. Do that as many times as you feel like you need or want. I'm just going to stay here one more breath, and then slowly release the back foot. Now. Front, uh, sorry, right hand outside the line of my right knee. I even move my right foot out to the right a little bit, right? I'm going to come to a kneeling half moon. So I'm going to really work on stacking my left hip above my right. I'm going to really practice flexing the toes of my left leg towards my face. So from here... You can send the hand up high, or you can bring it to the hip to stabilize. Just try to find that balance where your left hip is directly above the right, and your chest faces towards the side. Now, here's a little bit of an extra challenge if you like to play. Maybe shift a little more weight back on the knees. Come to the fingertips. Don't lean or press so much into the hand, and maybe... Maybe you can just take that front hand off Ooh, for a microsecond. Or maybe not. Maybe you stay with the hand on the floor. It's okay, whichever way. If you like to play, just take it off. 
microsecond, bring it back down. Or reach your top hand up to help you balance. Imagine your top hand being pulled towards the ceiling. And we'll just lift it up. Ooh. Let's come back down. Good job. All right, let's go to the other side now. I'm going to do the other side the opposite way just so you can see me later on, yeah? So, let's press the right foot back. Left hand reaches out forward. Take a breath in. On the breath out, the knee and elbow comes together. Breath in. Breath out. Breath in. And breath out. Reach back out on the breath in. Now, if you like to play, let's close our eyes. And see if we can bring the elbow and knee together. Without losing your balance. Focus on the breath. Chewing into your awareness of your fingers, toes, where your body is in space. And then... If you'd like to play a little more, grab your back foot, kick into the hand, lift the chest up tall. Either stay with that, or maybe on the breath out, deflate a little, come down a little, and then take another big breath in, kick into the hand, come back up, press into the ground. Now, taking that left hand outside, the line of my left foot. Taking my left foot out slightly to the left, I'm gonna come up into a kneeling half moon like we did on the other side. So see if you can start to find that point where the right hip now balances on top of the left and reach your hand up or maybe hand to hips, whatever is more preferable to you. See if you can come on the fingertips of that left hand and maybe, maybe, just for a split second, you come up off of the floor. Whoa, and you before, that's okay. We're all here just to experiment and have fun. <sighs> How are we going with that? All good? All right, let's come back down to your elbows. I'm going to step one foot back, then the other, and we're going to come to high plank. I hope you're getting a little bit warmer than before we started. That's the idea anyway. So, when I'm in plank, just think about spine nice and long, squeeze the butt cheeks together, yeah? Not only is that going to give us a nice butt, it's also going to help us stabilize our trunk and our core as well. Draw the belly button towards the spine. All right, now shift your weight onto the right elbow. Come to side plank. Am I joking? No, I'm not. We really, <laughs> we're doing this. All right, today... We're just going to go a little bit more on the core at the start, okay? Which is very helpful for what we're about to do. Now, if you like to play a little more challenge yourself, maybe lift up the top leg, the left leg. Reach your arm out forward. Now, see if you can bring the knee to the elbow and tap it. Ooh. Let's go. Tap the elbow to the knee. Breath out. No, I mean, big breath in as you reach out. Tap the elbow to the knee. Can you give me just one more, one more, one more? Tap it. Well done. Now, put the foot back down. Let's roll over to the left side. <sighs> oh, side plank almost seems relaxing now, doesn't it? Hell, I'm just going to turn around so I can see you or you can see me. Now, from here, if you'd like to have a little more fun, take, up the, take the right foot up into the sky, reach your right arm out, 
We're gonna do elbow to knee taps. Big breath out. Breath in. Breath out. Let's go one more. Let's go one more. You got this. Okay. Let's come back to high plank. And we're just gonna hold it here for another two minutes. Nah, I'm joking. Let's bring the hip down. Oh. All right. Let's bring the fingertips underneath the elbows. We're gonna come to Cobra. Breathing. Lift the chest off the floor. Press the belly into the mat. Breath out lower. Breathing. Lift. Breath out lower. Breathing. Lift one more time. And breath out lower. Now, if you need a little rest here, feel free to have a little rest of the forehead on the back of the hand. I do not mind. If you want to, you know, keep the momentum going, then we'll come back to Cobra on the breath in. Lift the chest off the floor. Squeeze those butt cheeks in. See if you can press the hips a little more into the floor. Maybe take the hands out to the side. Now let's go swimming. Breath in, hands forward. Breath out, elbows down. Lift the chest tall. And then take the fingertips back. We're going to interlace the fingers straight away. Breath in, lift the chest. Breath out, release the hands. Sweep the arms forward. Breath out. Lift the chest, elbows down. Fingers back. Interlace the hands. Lift the chest up. We're going to go again. Breath in. Breath out. Fingers interlace. Breath in. This time maybe my shoulders squeeze together a little more. And release. One more. Sweep the hands in front. Breath out. Elbows down. Squeeze the hands together. Big breath in. This time maybe take the wrists and hands off the buttocks. And we'll stay here for five, four, three, two, one. One. Oh, let's release and rest on the floor. Rest on one side of your cheek. Just to stretch out the neck. And if you are feeling warm, that's good. That was the intention. <laughs> Don't forget to rest on the other side of your cheek as well. Just so you even things out. All right. When you're ready, bring the hands back next to the rib cages. We're going to push ourselves up for Cobra or Upward Dog. Now, if you want to stay in Cobra, belly on the floor, yeah? Otherwise, belly and kneecaps off the floor into Upward Dog. Take a big breath in here and flip the feet over. Come to your first Down Dog. Make sure the hands, all corners of the palm, are grounded firmly into the mat. Fingers spread apart to distribute the weight over a greater surface area. And then we're just going to pedal the feet left and right, grounding one heel down at a time. See, we can synchronize the grounding of the heel with the breath out. Now let's lift both heels up and we're going to take it to the left side to give our right side a nice stretch. Don't dump all the weight to the right or to the left hand. Shift a little bit more weight back to the right as well. Stay with 
me? Now let's go to the other side. Heels to the right. One more breath in here. And release the breath. Bring the heels back to the center. Look towards the hands. See if you can walk the feet in nice and slow, keeping your legs straight as long as you can. And when the feet arrive, let the neck get long. Crown of the head towards the floor. Just come to a gentle forward fold. Let gravity draw the crown of the head towards the floor. Separating each vertebrae, releasing any tension in the spine. Now on the next breath in, we'll come off a halfway lift. Crown of the head forward now. Breath out, fold it forward. On the next breath in, slowly roll the spine up into standing. As the head arrives, sweep the arms up, breath in. And on the breath out, we we separate the hands and then we take another breath in. Sweep the hands up. On the breath out, we bring the hands behind our back. Press the palms together, interlace the fingers together. Big breath in. This time we open our chest towards the ceiling. Let the hips come forward if it feels good. One more big breath in. And now let's fold it forward. Bend at the knees. Maybe I let the arms come forward a little more as well. And on the breath out. Separate the hands. We're going to do another halfway lift. Breath in. On the breath out, ground the hands to the mat. So step it back into your high plank. On the breath in, shift the shoulders forward. If you need to be on your knees, that's fine as well. We're going to lower our chest to the ground on the breath out. Pressing to upward dog or cobra, breath in. And downward facing dog, breath out. We're going to do that just one more time, yeah? Look towards the hands. Slowly step or jump the feet to the front. Halfway lift, breath in. Fold it forward, breath out. Roll the spine up to standing. Sweep the arms up, breath in. And on the breath out, let the hands come down by your side. Take another big breath in, arms up. On the breath out, interlace the fingers behind the back. Big breath in, open the chest, send the hips forward. On the breath out, fold it forward. Separate the hands. Let them come to the floor. Halfway lift, breath in. And fold it forward, breath out. Ground the hands, step her back into your high plank. Breath in, shoulders forward over the elbows. Breath out, lower back down. Upward dog or cobra, breath in. And downward facing dog, breath out. Now, I want you to step a little wider than your usual down dog. At least hip width distance, okay? Let's start by taking our left hand a little bit closer towards the center, right? So it's not, so move it towards the center, but not quite at the center, okay? Now, with your right hand, see if you can reach either your, the back of your hamstring, calf, or maybe even grab the ankle. I'm just going to bring our gaze to our left, maybe even looking up towards the ceiling, through our left armpit. Deep breath in here and release on the breath out. Now let's 
transition to the other side. So ground the right hand down somewhere closer to the middle. Reach through with the left hand to the calf or ankle. And we're just going to look through our right armpit, maybe even up towards the ceiling. Release, let's come back to your down dog. Now, I want you to just sit, come down, bring your knees to the floor for a second, okay? Tuck your toes, sorry, untuck the toes, sit on the heel. So I just want to say, um, we're going to go into a few interesting shapes today. Now, if at any time you feel like something is beyond your normal practice or you just don't feel comfortable doing it, don't, don't do it, okay? You don't need to. I can't see you. No one else can see you. You're not impressing anyone. But if you do want to do it, good on you, right? I'm giving you an opportunity, trying to uh, expose you to new things. So uh, totally up to you, but just don't force yourself. That's all I'm saying, okay? We don't want to get injured especially in lockdown, right? <laughs> so let's come back to down dog. When you're ready. Now, I'm going to start with my right foot, okay? So on the next breath in, lift up the right leg. Keep the hip square for now. Toes pointing down. Okay, now I'm going to start to turn my toes towards the right, my right toes. As I do that, my right hip is going to open up to the right, and then you're going to bend into the knee. I'm going to point my right knee up towards the ceiling for three-legged dog. Now, on the breath out, I'm going to curl it in towards my nose. <sighs> breath in, kick it back up, open the hip up, three-legged dog. Breath out, knee to nose. <sighs> breath in, three-legged dog. And on the next breath out, see if you can bring the knee to the nose and then shift it across. Tap that left elbow, send that leg straight, come into fallen triangle. So if you got here pretty smoothly, let's try the next part. When I breathe out, I'm going to thread my left hand underneath my right. So I'm going to thread the needle in fallen triangle, right? Breath in, breath out. Breath in, breath out. One more. And breath out. Ground the left hand back. Come back to three-legged dog. You may need to adjust your hands. Okay? So get that right knee really high, and we're going to pivot onto the blade edge of my left foot. And slowly with control, lower the back foot down. Come into wild thing. Paint the sky with your hand. One big breath in, one circle. Two big breath in, two big circles. And then look down towards the mat. Now, squeeze. Oh, actually, I missed something. I apologize. Now, from here, from wild thing, let's tap the knee to the elbow. Okay, if you can. Tap the knee to the elbow, keep it there, and then step it towards the front if you can. Whew, that was juicy, wasn't it? <laughs> All right. So we're in a lunge position now, yeah? Let's come up for our crescent lunge. Whew. Don't worry, that's the hardest part. It's all good now. Now, as I said last week, Try to keep our pelvis level, like a bowl of water, not too forward, not too far back. Just nice and neutral, even if you have to bend into that back leg. Just tune back into your breath. Use this as your chance for recovery. Now, let's come forward. Lean forward, hands back into arrowhead. Alright, now, 
on the next breath in, you're going to send a bit more weight onto that front foot. Have faith. See so if you can lift off into aeroplane. If you happen to, you know, fall a little or need a little time to adjust, it's okay. We're just having fun. Come into aeroplane. And then, from here, slowly lower the back foot down. Come into warrior one. Big breath in. And on the breath out, interlace the hands behind the back. On the breath in, we're going to open the chest. Cut open towards the ceiling. Maybe send those hips forward a little more. And on the breath out, fall forward into humble warrior. Right shoulder on right knee. One more breath in here. And then let's separate the hands on the breath out. Let's work towards straightening that front leg, right? So we're going to straight away come into pyramid. Now, if you have tight hamstrings, try and put something underneath your hand, right? Maybe it's a book. Maybe it's some pillows, blankets, whatever it is. You know, if you have a... Or you can come to your fist, right? Or if you're a little more flexible, come to your hands. Just choose the variation that's going to serve you, right? And you can either hold this as a static stretch, or maybe you can just move a little bit with the chest. Breath in, scoot that chest forward. Feel that extra stretch, and then on the breath out, let everything lower back down. Breath in, scoot that chest forward. Breath out, lower everything back down. How are we doing here? Hamstrings, enjoying it? Okay, now. If you need to shorten your stance a little bit for the next one, that's all right, yeah? What I'm going to ask you to do is if you can reach your fingers around to the right side. So the fingers or the hands are somewhere outside your right foot and your body starts to form a little bit of a twist. Now, yes, I know that's going to stretch a little bit deeper into the outside of our hamstrings. So if you need a block or something to put underneath the hands, remember, that option is there. I'm sure you'll find something around the house. Or maybe even use some shoes, <laughs> just as an idea. All right. One more breath in here. Let's release the breath. Bring the hands back. Okay, now I want you to try and ground that left hand down. See if you can reach the right hand up into like a twisted form, a twisted pyramid pose. If that's too difficult, just bring the right hand onto the right hip. Try and look up towards the ceiling if you can. One more breath in here, and then on the next breath out. Release. Now let's cartwheel the arms. Let's come to a warrior two. Making sure that front foot, if you draw a line to the back, intersects in the middle of the back foot. Nice. So let's come to your warrior two. We really want to focus on having a stable base for what's to come. So make sure when you bend into that front knee, the knee is pointing straight ahead not pointing um, out that way or that way. When you bend into it, look down, you can see your big toe. Pelvis nice and neutral. Shoulders above the hips. And then bring the hands up. <sighs> now, we're going to flip the front hand. Reverse the warrior. Looping up through the right side body. Reaching the hand up towards the ceiling. And then, on the next breath out, bring that forearm down. 
weight to back arm through for side angle push. This time I'm opening up through the left side body. Activate energy all the way to the fingertips. Maybe dial that little finger down towards the floor. Okay, now I'm going to transition between the two movements by circling my body. Okay, so I'm going to circle it back into Reverse Warrior. Take a big breath in. I'm going to let the head circle forward and in front into Side Angle Pose. Take a breath out. Circle the back into Reverse Warrior. Breath in. Head rolls forward. Arm extends. Side angle pose, breath out. Breath in, reverse warrior. Breath out. Side angle pose. Breath in, reverse warrior. Breath out. Side angle pose. Breath in, reverse warrior. This time, straighten the front leg. And bring the hands back to level. Step the feet closer together if you need. We're going to go to triangle pose. So if you don't have a block with you, slide that front hand down the shin to use it for support. Go as deep or as high as you want. And then when you found your spot, just reach your left hand up towards the ceiling or maybe reach it out in front, up to you. See if you can bring some awareness to your hips. Feel that your right and left hip are aligned. Now, let's roll the chest towards the back. Bend into that back knee. We're going to come to Skandasana towards the back. So take your time. Take your time. Don't worry about going as deep as you can straight away. Just let your body ease into it, right? We're still aiming to open up through the hips. It's not about how deep you go. It's about how much you're stretching everything out. Sometimes when you're too rushed to go too deep, maybe you miss out on that beautiful stretch along the way. Okay, one more breath in here, and release the breath, okay. now let's stand up, ah. so, so we're going to play with half moon today, right, now I know for quite a few of us we don't necessarily have blocks at home, so we're going to do this a little bit like a single leg deadlift, sorry, so what I want you to do is bring the back foot uh, where that inner arch touches the front heel, okay? So right foot in front. Now, the left hand can be on the left hip or reaching up towards the ceiling, whatever's more comfortable for you. I just want you to think about keeping the back leg straight and then reaching down towards the ground. You don't have to touch the ground. You're just going to go as low as you can. And then when you feel like, oh, okay, I reach the end, let's just come back up with control. We're going to really focus on reaching down towards the floor, but using that back leg as a bit of a counter lever, right? Okay, that's the end. That's the end of my range. We don't have to go all the way down. Come back up. We're just going to keep playing with that. And then maybe as you get a little more comfortable, you can start to extend that top arm out. In fact, if anything, this makes it easier, extending that top arm towards the ceiling. It's going to imagine you're reaching for something towards the top of the ceiling. And then when you feel a little more comfortable with the hip stacking, 
just turn the chest towards the left, okay? And find the biggest expression of half moon that you can. We'll do one last one, okay? Now, make sure that back leg is nice and stiff, toes flexed, top fingers reaching towards the ceiling. Now, once you find that hip, a stacking point, turn the chest towards the left and with control, come back down. Woo! Nice job, everyone. Let's sweep the arms up. Big breath in. And on the breath out, we fold it forward, fold through our center. Halfway lift, breath in. Fold it forward, breath out. Either step it back into Chaturanga or go into Child Pose for a little rest if you feel the need. How's everyone doing? Still alive? <laughs> okay. Yeah. When you're ready, oh, by the way, if you need a drink, please do. I always forget to tell people. Yeah, whenever you feel ready, we're going to go to the other side, yeah? So just meet me back in downward facing dog. Find a, sorry, take a breath to find your down dog first. Feel the weight to e distribute it evenly between all the four corners of your body. And then on the next breath in, we're going to lift up the left foot. Keep the left leg straight, toes pointing down to start with. And then I'm going to start to turn the toes to the left. Open up the hip to the left side. And then bend into that knee. Come to three-legged dog. So th at this point, the knee is the highest part of my body. On the breath out. Squeeze that left knee into the nose. Kick back up. Breath in. Breath out. Knee to nose. Kick back up. Breath in. Now, squeeze the knee to the nose. Breath out. Tap the right elbow if you can. Extend the left leg out for fallen triangle. With your right foot, See if you can ground the whole right foot down. That's going to help you balance. Now, we're going to thread the needle if you want to come along. Breath out. Reach through. Breath in. Reach back up. Breath out. Reach through. Breath in. Reach back up. Breath out. Reach through. One last one. Big breath in. And from here. We're going to ground that right hand down. Come back into three-legged dog. And see if we can, I can slowly transition the weight onto the blade edge of my right foot. Slowly with control. Lower down. Into wild thing. I'm going to paint the circle. Paint the sky with a circle twice. Big breath in. And big breath in. For the second circle. Now, I'm going to come into a side plank, if you like, or just step it straight through to the front. Tap the elbow to the knee. Tap the elbow to the knee for two. Squeeze it, and then step it forward. Don't worry, that's the hardest part. Now let's come up for Crescent Lunge. Take a moment here to level the hips. Maybe you need to bend a little bit into that back knee. Now, 
Now, let's lean forward. Come into Arrowhead. Start to focus your gaze and your attention onto that front foot. On the next big breath in, have faith. Hop into an aeroplane pose. Now, find your balance point and then slowly lower the back leg down into Warrior One. So in Warrior One, my back heel is down. Back foot is pointed out 45 degrees. Take a big breath in, in warrior one. On the breath out, interlace the hands together. A big breath in, open the heart. And on the breath out, fold it forward. Left shoulder to the left knee. Keep the palms pressed together, if you can. Squeeze the shoulder blades together a little more. And let's separate the hands. Let them come to the floor. We'll work towards straightening that front leg for pyramid. Remember not to dump all the weight onto that front leg or front foot. You also want to shift a little bit of weight back to the back foot and let the chest fold, roll down towards the side. Now you can either hold this as a static stretch or maybe on the next breath in, you scoop the chest forward a little more. Feel that extra stretch. And then on the breath out, fold it back down. Now. If you like to have a little more fun, you reach the fingers to the left side, outside the line of the left foot. By doing so, maybe you feel an additional stretch in that front leg, or maybe you just feel a little bit more opening through your right side body. Ground the right hand down. I'm going to bring my left hand to my left hip. Dial the chest to the left. Reach up towards the ceiling with the left. Come into like a twister pyramid pose. If reaching the hand up is too hard, just keep the hand on the hip. Take your gaze up towards the ceiling if you can. One more big breath in here. And then on the breath out, release the hand down. Let's bend into that front knee, can't wheel the hands into warrior two. Remember, I want that straight line from the front foot intersecting the back, right? Find a solid foundation in warrior two first. Make sure when you bend into the front knee, you can see the big toe. And your knee is not in front of the ankle, it's directly above. Let's bring the hands up. We're going to flip the front palm. Reverse the warrior. Big breath in. Open up through the left side body. And on the breath out, come to side angle pose. We're going to reverse the warrior again. But this time, I'm going to start to circle my body and transition between the two. Breath out, roll the forward, side angle pose. Breath in, roll the back, reverse the warrior. Roll the forward, breath out, side angle. Reverse the warrior, breath in. Breath out, roll the forward, side angle. 
Last one, reverse the warrior, this time straight in the front leg. And maybe shorten your stance a little. We'll come to try and go on the other side. So lean forward, slide that front hand down the front shin. And you can bring that right hand onto the right hip or reach up towards the ceiling. Or maybe you want to take it out in front. So find one that works for you. Try and dial that armpit up towards the ceiling, wherever you are. Slowly come back up. We're going to bend into the back knee. Come down for Skandasana. Remember, take your time. We're not in a rush. <sighs> Unless you have somewhere to be. And if you're living in Sydney or Melbourne, maybe not. Okay, so once your hips have melted and opened up a little bit more, we'll just settle into our Skandasana for that extra breath. Now, let's walk the hands forward, come up into standing. We're going to play with our half moon on the other side, right? So like I said, you want to have that arch of the right foot pressing up against the left heel left toes facing front the le right hand can come to the hip to start with if you like and we're just going to really think of it like a single leg deadlift right so we're going to try and send the hands down to the floor not touching and then come back up but the key is you got to come back up with control right so you just reach down as far as you feel comfortable and then really work on coming back up super slow yeah now if you feel that's quite restrictive having the hand on the hip reach your hand up and then use the right hand to help you balance wiggle the fingertips in the right hand trust me that would actually make it easier Feel that sensation of the right hip stacking above the left, and then maybe if you feel ready, look towards the look towards the right. Yeah, everyone okay? Just keep playing with that. Now we'll do one last one together. Okay, so lean forward, reach your hand down, right hand reaches up. Feel the hips stacking above each other. Find the biggest expression you can of half moon. And from here, we'll just gently come back up. Whew. Take a big breath in. Sweep the hands up. On the breath out, we fold it through heart center. Step it back for a high plank. Or meet me in downward dog. Chaturanga down if you wish. We'll go to upward dog or cobra. And meet everyone in downward facing dog. Alright, let's end the practice with some heart pigeons. We'll take the right leg up first. Come to a three legged dog. Open up the hip. And let's bring the right knee to the right wrist. From here. I'm just going to shuffle that left knee back. Now, if you were in class, I would tell you to put a block under your right hip now. If your right hip is floating off the floor, right? So what if I don't have blocks? Well, you can use a substitute. Like, for example, I have a water bottle here, right? I can put a water bottle underneath. Or maybe use some pillows, blankets, whatever is nearby you. And if you say to me, look, I've really got nothing near me right now, 
it's okay. Just stay up high on your hands. But with every breath out, you just think about taking away the tension from the hips. Especially that right hand, right? That's going to support your right hip. So just gently ease into it. Resist the urge to fall forward too early. Let the hips soften a little bit before you do that. Nice. And then, once the hips have softened a little, if you like to fall forward, feel free. I'm sure if you are living in Sydney or Melbourne now, there's a lot of changes going on in life, right? Lots of uh, twists and turns every day. And I guess that's um, part of what inspired the sequence that we did today for me. Just uh, throwing out a few things that's a little unexpected and unusual and seeing how we deal with that, right? Do we embrace a challenge? Or do we just run away from it? Even if we embrace it, it's not about doing everything. It's just about doing what we can to deal with it, isn't it? All right, let's switch sides. So, I'm taking my left knee up, three-legged dog. And I'm going to bring my left knee to my left wrist. The shin is about 45 degrees to the front of the mat. Shuffle that right knee back. See, I don't have a block as well, right? So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to stay high for a few breaths. Letting that left hip soften. It's such an unusual shape for our hips to be in considering we're normally sitting chairs. So we just want to give it a few breaths. Let it all relax. And then when the hips have opened up a little bit more, feel free to lower down a little if you wish. Come forward or stay upright. Do what resonates with you more today. So yes, as I was saying before, when certain challenges come our way, it's not about having to cope with it a hundred percent or, you know, um, not let it get to you, but it's just about doing the best you can in terms of dealing with a challenge in front of you. And if you've done your best, there's nothing to be ashamed of, right? All right, let's ground your hip down. Roll those legs forward. Now, we're gonna lower down towards the mat. I think we work pretty hard today, so I'll cut the core section out, save it for tomorrow. So we'll just lower down. If you want to lower down slowly, you may. That will just activate our core a tiny bit before we go into Shavasana. And once you arrive on the floor, feel free to do what you feel like you need. If you like to do a bridge pose to open up the chest one more time, lift the hips up, please feel free. If you feel like, oh, actually, I want to lower the hips down, take my legs over my head for plow or death lens pose, please feel free. Just roll the back the other way a little. Or 
or if you feel like you need another side twist, feel free to try that as well. Feel free to stay longer in an option, right? I'm just sort of demoing through a few options for everyone's consideration. Stay longer wherever you need, right? If a shoulder stand or wheel compels you, feel free as well. But if it doesn't, don't worry, just rest it down. Find yourself in a happy baby pose. Just to ground the sacrum down. You can stretch out the legs if you wish. Just take the next three, four breaths to get yourself ready for a quick Shavasana. And then when you're ready, rest everything down. We'll come down to the mat. Take a nice deep breath in. And on the breath out, just let everything go. Allow your mind to drift off somewhere. to let go of whatever thoughts you're holding on to. Slowly take a breath in and gently exhale the breath out. If you need to stay longer where you are, where you found yourself somewhere interesting, feel free to stay there. After all, you're just at home. You don't need to be anywhere else. If for any reason you feel like ending your practice sitting up, just gently roll onto your side. Let your body settle for a breath here. And then gently roll up into a sitting position of your choice. Thank you all so much for joining me today. I really appreciate your time in the last hour. And uh, on behalf of myself, Matthew, and the Body Fit team, I wish you a beautiful weekend and uh, a safe and happy week ahead. Namaste. Thank you, guys. Now, tomorrow I'll be teaching again at the same time. If you have um, any questions, please feel free to ask me now. Otherwise, uh, I'll see you tomorrow morning. Thank you, Kathy. All right. 
and says no other questions, I will end the live stream now. <laughs> Gary, don't worry. It's uh, all recorded, actually, so you'll be on the Body Fit Miranda Facebook page after this. Thank you, Shamana. Good to see you. <laughs> all right. Well, if there's no other questions, I'm going to end the live stream now. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Yeah? Bye.